Tom, but you're out early. I've been rushing down to the chemist. My old dad, he's been too early this morning. Sorry to dash away. Morning, Miss Peabody. Good morning, Herbert. You'll find the papers on the counter. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Use, use. Good morning, Mr. Highfield. Good morning. You're late. That's very naughty. Is it? I dusted your counter this morning. Yeah. And I polished your scales. There was a big piece of putty stuck under one side. Now you'll be able to give correct weights. How about your side? Don't you better get that done? Oh, yes, my side. Okie dokie. again this morning. I've got my hands caught in the handles. You're always doing it. I know. Aren't I silly girl? Every morning I say to myself, Amelia, now be careful with those shutters. Ah, pull. <laughs> it's like being in the stocks, isn't it, Mr. Harfield? Uh, have you ever read the Scarlet Letter? No. <laughs> um, good morning. Why, Mr. Sheepshank, you gave me quite a start. Oh, look, I'm free. How did I do that? I don't suppose you've seen Mr. Andy about, have you? No. As a matter of fact, he promised to chop some wood for us this morning. He was going to mend our cane chairs. I hope he's not too late, or we'll have to hold our vestry meeting without any bottoms. Oh, I say, what a really excellent picture of you, Miss Peabody. Of me? Yes, at the garden party. Haven't you seen it? No, I never read the papers. I never get a chance. By the time I've cutted up my stamps, in my pen... And got caught in the shutter? Oh, yes. <laughs> I was at his mercy just now. I mean, I got stuck again. Miss Peabody, Lady Driscoll and Miss Jackie Summers snapped at the bar. Oh, isn't it beautiful? I think it's terrible. Good morning, my lady. Good morning, Sir George. Personally, I think it's a darn bad morning. George? Well, I cut myself shaving. I can't use my electric razor till Andy comes and fixes it. And now this happens. Oh, this? I, I thought it was rather jolly. Rather jolly? They spelled my name with two L's. L, L. Yes, that's what I've had all the morning. L. This looks like the last, and I've only broken two, Dad. Do I rate professional status? Milk, milk, Two more lessons, and I have the yodel, too. Good morning, Mr. Harfield. Good morning, Miss Jackie. Good morning, Peabody. Since when have you been a milkmaid, Miss Jackie? Well, Joe's turned in with lumbago, and Harry's turned back with gout. Oh, that reminds me. When under the handyman does turn up, tell him to fix the who's it. The, uh, who's it? That's what he always calls it. You know, that ridiculous tube in the kitchen. You blow down and shout, who's it? I don't like that. I'm late. Excuse me, Miss Jackie, while I take a quick shower.
Thanks, chaps. Fancy you remembering that. Sorry, fellas, I can't wait now. I'm in the middle of a hurry. Well, thanks, kids. Bye. 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 Jimmy, why didn't you wake me up this morning? You know we're going to put seven o'clock in this firm. Well, I gave you an extra half hour as my birthday present. Yeah, well, thanks very much, but you know Mrs. Emery's poodle dog has to be walked out. Tell her you took time off as a present. I am probably by now the poodle's given her a present. Where's my socks? Oh. Well, what's the programme today? 7.30, chicken coop at farm. We can cross that out. What, and leave beautiful Miss Jackie without a roof to a coop? <laughs> She'd be a lot more beautiful if she paid for some of the odd jobs you do. Do you think I'd take money from her? No, because you're a daft. That's right. Eh? I'll trouble you to have a bit more respect for your elder brother. Pooh. Always painting her like this, and this, and this. Well, what if I am? That's my business. And one day when I'm a famous painter, these pictures will sell like hot cakes. I'd rather have a hot cake. Women make me sick. Show me a woman and I'll show you trouble. I'll certainly show you some... Oh, shut up. Oh, there's a picture over here. Picture of who? Your bit of stuff. Eh? What? Where? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Just like her. Look at those eyes. Those lips. Those nose. And look at that time. Eight o'clock. You're supposed to be at the cinema facing up your poster. <sighs> Do you know, I've... I feel like taking her to the pictures again. You've never taken her to the pictures? I know I haven't, but I felt like it many a time. I'm just coming over to fix your coop. <laughs> it's funny, I can fix everything, but I can't fix you and me. You know, I'm a jack of all trades. I'm as busy as a bee. Now, if anything needs fixing, just get in touch with me. If your water system's frozen or the baby's face turns blue, just ring me on the telephone, cos I know what to do. They call me Andy, George Andy. Andy the handyman, my job is dandy, dandy. I do the best I can, always at your service. You may depend, and don't forget, it's never too late to mend. As an artist, I draw faces, my profiles are divine. But when it comes to figures, that's where I'm not so fine. A girl told me last night I didn't know where to draw the line. No, oh, it comes in handy being a handyman. Now in the park one morning, a bulldog I did see. I fairly stood and shivered when he came and sniffed at me. I didn't even move when it mistook me for a tree. Oh, it comes in handy being a handyman. They call me Andy, George Andy. Andy the handyman, my job is dandy, dandy. I do the best I can, always at your service. You may depend, and don't forget, it's never too late to mend. A baby once was christened, the parson said, well, well. He isn't like his mother or his father, you can tell. Who does the child remind you of? And the choir began to yell, whoa, it comes in Andy B in an Andy man. I gave a girl a gold watch, she said it's rather light. It's got no works inside it, now surely that's not right. I said, now don't you worry, I'll give you the works tonight. Oh, it comes in Andy B in an Andy man. Miss Jackie. Morning, Jimmy. Morning. Oh, I'm sorry we're late, but there was a bit of a muck up with the clock, you see. Jimmy, knowing like it was my birthday. My birthday? Why, right, George, many happy returns of the day. If I'd known, I'd have brought you a present. I, I didn't tell you for that reason. Oh, I know you didn't. But you shall have one all the same. What do you want most? Money! <laughs> Your account. 
Why, of course, you should have given me this before. No, no, Jimmy's only kidding, Miss Jackie. You, you don't have to pay for anything. But, George, you've got to be paid for your work. No, I don't, really, I don't. I mean, there's nothing I'd like better than to go to work on you. Um, well, for any, anything for you, Miss Jackie. Hey, in the meantime, how about going to work on this chicken coop? Oh, yes, the coop. Dad says the roof leaks. Uh, it looks a bit council built. Never mind, we'll soon fix it. Carry my tools. Come on, missus, the decorator's are here. Now, don't worry, mother will clean up all the mess we make and <laughs> watch your step, the old rooster's behind the shed. <laughs> oh, by the way, Dad told me to ask if you'd have time to do the milk rounds with me. If I'd have time to do the milk rounds with you? <laughs> you watch me. Milk oh, milk oh, milk oh. Here, your boyfriend's just arrived. Who? Mr. Latimer. Oh. Oh. Hello, Robert. Oh, good morning, my dear. Oh, Andy, you're the very man I want to see. Me? Yes, it'll save sending it. My clients, the Caravan Construction Company, desire me to give you 24 hours to settle your back rent. This is formal notice. Well, why make a fuss about it? We'll pay it this afternoon. You see, Jimmy and I work on a sort of budget. Like, uh, everything pays for something. For instance, walking out Mrs. Henry's poodle, that pays for the paper bill. Oh, does it? I believe Miss Peabody had to wait three weeks for it. Oh, well, that was when Mrs. Henry's poodle was having pups. It couldn't be walked for three weeks, a sort of act of providence, but it's all in the budget. And all the plumbing and stopped-up drains pay the milk bill. And washers, fuses and flues, that takes care of the baker. And every week, George paints the posters for the cinema. And that pays the rent, you see. Oh, it hasn't done so for the last three weeks. Oh, well, that was another act of providence, you see. By a bit of bad luck, they had a good pitch and it ran for two weeks. So they didn't want any posters until today? Well, I haven't time to argue about it. You've got the letter, the rest is up to you. Oh, now, my dear, if you'll uh, hurry up and change. Change? Well, surely you don't expect to come to the law courts in that outfit. But, Robert, I can't come to the law courts. I've got to help Dad. Don't be unreasonable. Well, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect you to go somewhere sometime or other with me. I've helped your dad enough and never charged a penny. I deserve something in return. Oh, don't talk like East Lynn. Then don't act like little Nell. Now go and get changed. But there's still a cow to be milked. All right, leave it to Andy. Who, me? He can't milk a cow. Why not? It only takes average intelligence. And there's a horse to be conditioned, too. Well, that's only a matter of giving him a powder. Andy. Yes, sir? See that the cow is milked and give the horse a powder. Yes, sir. Now hurry up and change, my dear. All right. Of course, you, you know what he wants, don't you? Oh, and what do I want? You, well, you, you want the horse milk and the cow given the powder? Finished? Yes. All right, come on. Well, that's one job done. What now? Uh, the cow. Come on. Well, I'll bet I'm the first odd job man to milk one of these. <laughs> I bet you are. That's a bull. Yes. Hey. This is the cow. Well, here we are. Go on, milk it. I don't know how to milk a cow. You don't? No. <laughs> Can't milk a cow. Can you? No. I know you milk it from the back. From the back? <laughs> don't be daft. Of course you do. Do you mean to say I've got to get on her back? No, this end down here. Oh, that's all right, because I'm an odd job man, not a cowboy. Now, I've got to get someone to get the milk in. Oh. Now, this is it. There's milk in it already. That'll be fine. Now we won't be long. That won't go under there. No, you're right. We'll have to jack it up a bit. Here, use the bucket. Oh, that's more her size, isn't it? Now, go on, Rosie. Away you go. You know, I think she's a bit shy in front of strangers. I'm like that. Shall we do the horse while we're waiting? Good idea. And how's the patient today? What seems to be the trouble? What did Miss Jackie say? One dram of what? Uh, caramel. Caramel? Doesn't seem to be. Oh, here's something. Funny way to spell it, though. C-A-L-O. This must be it, though. Look, dose for horses, one dram. This is it. Who's a quack? <laughs> Go on, get out of it. Now, here you are. Lovely yum yum, you're going to love this. Yes, you are, come on. Now, come on, open up for Uncle George. 
Go on, I wouldn't kid to you. It's nice. You'd love it. Go on, I'll, I'll have some first. Hey. No, you don't take any. I wasn't going to. I was only kidding to him. Now, come on, be a good lad. It's for your own good. Now, come on. It's no use. He won't have it. He's got to have it. Where's that book of words? Do you think if I gave it to him a spoonful of S-T-R-A-W? Here it is. Giving powder medicine to unwilling animals. Tells you how to do it there. Why? Oh, it says take a rubber stomach tube. That'll be that. Place the powder in the tube. Put one end of the tube in the animal's mouth. Sounds easy enough. Aye. Put the other end of the tube in your own mouth and blow. Well, go on. Not me. You're the odd job, man. Well, come on, Nobby. Now, this will do you. This will do you the world of good. This is sure a bit of our sense. It won't be long now. It'll all be over in a minute. Are you ready? of this bill. Oh, hello, Mr. Pepper. What? Don't you like it? It's terrible. I told you last time I can't sell a picture on faces. I want excitement in the posters. Well, you, you've got a, a pair of handcuffs and, and a, a revolver. What more do you want? I want figures. Bodies. Something in silks and satins. But I can't draw bodies. I never could. Well, it's about time you learn, because until you do, I'm going elsewhere for my posters. But... Mr. Pepper, you can't do that. You're in my budget. I mean, where am I going to get a model from? I can't stop a young woman and say, excuse me, miss, can I see you in silks and satins? She'll smack my face. What in the name of... What's this? Oh, dear. I forgot to finish it. Possibly the last poster I'll post. Why? What's happened? Well, Jimmy, we haven't got any rent, and old Pepper says I needn't come back unless I can draw something exciting and alluring. You mean, uh, like strawberry fans and things? No, like women in silks and satins and paws and more silks and satins. Wouldn't you know it? Women. They're at the bottom of all the trouble in the world. Come here. No, don't rush her. Well, you better start learning to draw figures. <laughs> Where am I going to get a model from? I don't mind posing for you. Don't be daft. You wouldn't look right. Besides, he wants girls. I always knew you were a mug not to go to figure classes. Well, you know I didn't like it. Just because a girl stands up on a platform in the... Ah, uh, Jimmy, you mustn't say that. Besides, I'll bet the mothers didn't know they were doing it. And I bet our mother didn't know we were going to starve because you were much too shy. I'll give a thousand pounds this minute to be a millionaire. Hey! Look, this drawing was made by one of our pupils after only one lesson. It earned him a hundred pounds. hundred quid. Oh, excuse me, miss. I'm looking for an art school. Je ne comprends pas. Oh, beg your pardon. I've, I've lost an advertisement. First day, Wait. What? Oh, hello. Uh, when I changed my clothes this morning, I was going no, to... No, complain, don't say no. Yes, I know, but I was, I was going to... What do you think you're doing? Me? Well, I was just trying to... I know you were. I saw you. I don't understand. You can get six months for it. Do you understand that? Six months just for... Just for that. Yeah, but if I don't ask, how can I find out? Oh, so you want to make something of it. Very well, come on. No, come no, on. I, I don't, oh, no, I, I don't want to make anything out of something. I'm a painter. I came here to take a course in... Are you kidding me? No, honest, mister. I took the advertisement out of a paper, but I left it in my shrunk suit, and, and I came here to, I wanted to find out if... All I... right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Now beat it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, something. I'm sorry. I 
I want a good yelp, me. I'm looking for an art school. Which one? Well, it's advertised in the newspapers. They all do. Yes, but it, it was headed, don't you wish you could draw like this? They all are. Yes, but it had the drawing of a bathing girl. Drawn by one of our pupils after only one lesson? Yes, that's it. Which is that? All of them. Oh, <laughs> makes it a bit awkward, doesn't it? Well, uh, mention a few names. Well, was it the Modern School of Commercial Art? Yeah, that, that's it, Modern School of Commercial Art. Or was it the Commercial School of Modern Art? I don't know. Then again, you can't be sure it wasn't the Commercial and Modern School of Art. No. Well, I really don't know what to suggest, sir. Well, let's try eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Ah, they're not in this building, sir. Uh, well, what about uh, upstairs? Have a look round. I'm afraid I can't take you upstairs, sir. There's no smoking allowed. <laughs> but I'm not smoking. No, but I am. I suppose I'd better have one myself, then. What would you like? Oh! Oh! Have you hurt yourself? I'm sorry, it's all my fault leaving a bag like that. I shouldn't have left it. Oh! Would half cop it. Cop it? Well, for doing that while class is on. Doing what? Doodling. Doodling? Yes. Aren't you supposed to be painting that? That is that. <coughs> and is that that too? Certainly. But it's nothing like it. Nothing like it? He says it's nothing like it. My dear Dolores, it's wonderful, quite wonderful. Such nuance, such abstract. But where's his arms and his legs and his face? Arms and legs? Face? My dear fellow, we don't paint that nonsense. Anyone can see the external. We look deep inside a man. We see his soul, his thoughts, his fears and his worries. Worries? <laughs> well, that lot inside him is entitled to have worries. Why argue with him, Osbert? Let's see your paints or brush or whatever it is that you sell them. Hey, leave that alone. A hot water bottle. Who wants this? Uh, don't be so daft. Hey! A ukulele. Leave my ukulele alone. And a battered alarm clock. Army clock. Pajamas. Cheeky fast cat. I say, you don't expect to sell that rubbish, do you? Sell it? I'm not selling anything. I've come here to take lessons. Oh, then you're a painter. A brother brush. Yes, but no relation to anybody that paints that sort of stuff. Have you brought a sample of your work? Sample? Oh, yes, most necessary. You see, anybody could knock at the door, walk in, and say they were a painter, couldn't they? <laughs> yes. Then you'd better do something quickly before the professor arrives. Montgomery, a canvas. Here's a crayon. Your humble mm -hmm. servant, maestro. Well, I usually work from a photograph. Oh. I know. I'll use this. <gasps> wonderful, wonderful. What a subject. A tree in agony. Eh? A beautiful tree. Stately and regal. Writhing in agony. <laughs> you know, there's one of us daft and I'm all right. That's not a tree, that's Miss Peabody, our postmistress. Oh, can't you see beyond that? Can't you see that tree? A tree who intimately lives with rain. A tree begging for mercy, crying out to be saved. But there's no tree there. Oh, have you no imagination? There is a piece of paper. Newspapers are made from pulp. Trees have to be cut down to make pulp. Can't you see that tree being cut down? A tree in agony. Get away, go on, get out of it, get on. What are you doing? <laughs> There's a dog getting very close to you, a tree. Have you no soul? <laughs> well, I can't draw trees very well. Do you mind if I just do the people in the picture? Oh, do what you like. He's a realist. 
first. It actually looks like a face. The professor saw it, he'd go mad. Let's keep him here till the professor does see it, eh? wishy-washy stuff. There's no body in it. Oh, well, that's my trouble. That's what I've come to learn. What? Well, I want to be able to draw... Uh, I want to draw that. Oh, he wants to draw that. Oh, that. Hi. And that. Oh, I see. Well, while we're waiting for the professor, tell us more about yourself. What else do you do besides painting? Oh, me? Well, I'm a sort of odd job man, you know. Yes, here's my card. The price is on the back, subject to revision. <laughs> what about this? Is this an odd job, too? No, I play that. No, did you hear that? <laughs> I don't believe it. He says he can play it. I bet he can't. Well, lots of people have heard me. <laughs> Hi, they all laugh when I started to play. But, you know, when I learned to play the ukulele, I used to practice day and night. I did. My pals all roared as I fumbled at a chord, but I couldn't get the darn thing right. They laughed <laughs> when I started to play. They laughed so hard. Only two lessons I had. I went up the scale and down the scale. I wasn't so bad, but one chap, <laughs> he said, Oh, what a mug. <laughs> no, you can't learn that way. He took the uke off me and said, no, I'll ever try. Just then the G-string bust and blew right into his <laughs> eye. He laughed <laughs> when I started to play, but he didn't laugh again that day. They laughed when I started to play, they laughed <laughs> so hard. Strip poker, that's a good game. Now once I lost my trousers to a gambling dame, but when... <laughs> Started shuffling the cards, <laughs> the luck changed my way. I won a frock and undies, she was left, I declare. As bare as any savage, and as savage as a bear. <laughs> she laughed when I started to play, but she didn't laugh again that day. Now once I saw a game of water polo, with players from a ladies' school. The girls all cried, won't you make up a side? So I dived into the bathing pool. <laughs> they laughed when I started to play. They laughed so hard. In goal I paddled about. Soon a great big bouncing ball I started to cloud. But when it came bobbing back, well, I smacked it away. Then the ball turned over and the girl said, no larks. Seven times you smack me where I can't show the marks. She laughed <laughs> when I started to play, but she didn't laugh again that day. Sample. You did it? Yes, I'm all right on edge. It's the things underneath I want to learn about. Get out! Yeah, but I'm... You dare draw something that looked like something in my school? Ah, I want my case, my case. Outside you, realize, and don't you ever dare come back. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. 
I hope you get painted with seven heads and have a headache in every one of them. I, uh, I wonder if I can be of any help. The well, modern school of commercial art is at your service. I've just had a basin full of modern art. I know, I heard. My dear sir, they're poseurs, exhibitionists, nothing but attitudinists. Fancy that. Now, what branch of painting do you wish to learn? Well, I want to learn how to draw bodies. Then, my dear sir, you've come to the right place. Through this doorway have passed some of the greatest body painters of the era. And uh, what kind of bodies do you wish to specialise in? <laughs> well, uh, I want to draw ladies. I've got a good character. I can get you some references if you, if you want My to. My dear sir, I can tell by just looking at you that you have an artistic flair. In fact, you're just the kind of student that we like to take in. Oh. Is that this school? Yes, sir, yes. That is our advertisement. Oh, well, this is the place I've been looking for. Ah, in that case, you know our terms. Mm -hmm. Five pounds for the course of ten lessons. Yes, well, I'll take one. Uh, one what? One lesson is the ten bob. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we can't just give one lesson for ten shillings. You have to take the full course or nothing. Oh, I'll take the full course, all right, but I've only got ten bob at the moment. I'm sorry, but, um... Well, I can pay the balance after. After what? After the first lesson, like it says in your advertisement. I think there's some mistake. No, no, there isn't. No, it says in your advertisement that after one lesson, I can earn hundred pounds. Well, as soon as I do that, then I can pay for the rest of the course. Do you see? Oh. Of course. Of course you can. Well, are you ready to start your first figure lesson? <laughs> yes, but I feel a bit nervous, but we may as well get it over with. <laughs> there you are, my dear sir. That is the model you will draw from. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? <laughs> what do we do now? You come back next Monday at the same time. What about my first lesson? You've just had it. But I haven't drawn a line. No, but you saw the model, didn't you? Well, only just. Good. Now go home, turn over in your mind, eh? and practice. Yeah, I know. But... Now listen, I can't practice. I get nothing to practice with. I mean, yeah, but, yeah, but hey, hey, is that all I get for ten, Bob? Until Monday. Then when you return with the money, we'll show you how to attack the model. Attack it? I don't want to attack it, I want to draw it. Good day. But I, but the... Oh, it's a daft profession. Psst, psst, psst. Oh, and what do you want? You forgot your hat and half your pyjamas. Oh, I beg your pardon. We've got something else of yours, too. Your masterpiece. Oh, you can have that. I wouldn't mind the girl in the middle. <laughs> Miss Jackie. Oh, you know her? Yes, I know her well. Very well? <laughs> very, very well. That well? That well. Oh! 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 So you come back? Sir, I know the chien you had insult to injury. I didn't know it. Ne put jamais vos pieds dans ma maison. We're taking the girls out for an airy. Ah. <laughs> oh, nice bit of homework. What? Blimey. After one lesson, eh? Bit of a squash, isn't it? <laughs> I don't suppose you'd. Uh... No, didn't think you would. Oh, thank you, lady. Thank you, sir. Thank you, lady. Thank... Will you keep an eye on this for us while I telephone? Of course, mate. But don't ask me for coppers, or I ain't made a glass for them. Well, I've only got tuppence myself, but when I come back, I'll put Gary Cooper's nose right for nothing. Okay. Well, Gary, old boy, now we've got three new stars. Cool, strike and I. Home was never like this. Thank you, lady. 
Thank you, sir. Is that Euston Station? Office Tower Company? I don't want a towel, I want a train. Hello, miss. Uh, young woman. Did you do it from models? No, from memory. <laughs> It's perfect, Armstrong. It's just what you want. Yes, but it's hardly the thing for a nationwide campaign. That's just where you're wrong. Look at the stir it's creating here on a street corner. You look nice on your study wall. A soft light and don't tell the missus. How much do you want for it? Uh, we'll make me an offer. Will you take 20 pounds for it? 20 quid? Good lummy, I'll sign it for that, sir. Well, have it delivered to this address. All right, well, if it's all the same to you, sir, I'd rather you took it with you because if I have it by me, I might change my mind. You know what we artists are. Oh, all right. Well, yes, wrap it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wrap it up, sir. Yes, sir. There taxi? you are, sir. Yes, sir. Here you are, taxi. Here you are. Yes, sir. Hello, miss. Hello. What number do I have to ask for to get used to one, two, three, four? Well, I've dialed and I've asked and I've pushed button A and pulled button B and I've and I've. Oh, number engaged. Oh, don't bother. Come on, button. <laughs> I've got the jackpot. I was trying to get my tuppence back, and I think the girl at the exchange must have taken a fancy to me. Perhaps you could push it back again. Now, don't be afraid to speak. I can always dig up the stone. Oh, I'm sorry I've been such a long time, but <laughs> I've had a bit of money troubles. It's all right, mate. Your money troubles are over. You've earned yourself a fiver. Five pounds? Yes, and I ought to take ten percent. I did, but I won't see. Straight up fitting, and they call me in Brixton. What's this for? Your picture. My picture? Yes, the one of the three Lulus. I sold it for a fiver. You sold? You sold that picture for a fiver? All right, mate, all right. Can't you stand a joke? I sold it for a tenner. But who did you sell it to? A couple of blokes. They said it was just what they was looking for, a sort of advertisement that everyone would look at. Advertisement? Do you mean other people would be looking at it? Oh, this is terrible. There's nothing terrible about a tenner, is there? It isn't the money. I'm not interested in the money. Oh, I wonder what they say when they see it. You'll be famous. You mean I'll be found out? It'll be in every magazine. But I don't want it in every magazine. It mustn't go in every magazine. You've got to find them and get it back again. I have? Yes. You know them. I don't. Otherwise, there'll be terrible trouble. Yes, but I can't leave here about me pitch. Well, I'll look after that. You take the money, but you've got to find them. All right, if that's the way you want it. And no knocking off me coppers while I've gone. I'm trusting you. All right. Thank you, miss. Taxi! Show me! Thank you, sir. Good luck to you, lady. Good luck to me. Oh, so it's you again. What are you doing here, anyway? I'm minding these paintings for a friend. What paintings? These pit. Where are they gone? Yeah, I've had just about enough of you. Suspicious behaviour with young ladies, suspicious behaviour in a phone box, and now loitering. I'm not loitering. I'm waiting for him to bring back my picture. What picture? The, the three young ladies in the... Well, in the picture. Come on. Well, 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 what will Jackie say? It'll be in all the magazines. I don't know about the magazines. You're very likely to make the front page of the news of the world. Now, look, mister. I've always been a law-abiding citizen. I've paid my income tax and I've had any income. I've got my wireless license and I've never gone first class with a third class ticket. What's that got to do with me? You were the first bit of law I've ever broken. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Well, if it's in, I hope it's in quick before my wrist gives out. I hope it's in before our cash gives out. Pound for magazines. Cool! Don't women wear funny things? Jimmy, I told you to let me go through the women's magazines. Oh, nothing worth looking at anyway. Well, that lets us out till next week.
thought you were somebody. What's happening? Well, we've got to get every paper in the village before anybody sees them. But Herbert will be delivering now. I've got all these. He'll only have done this in the high street. Now, you get off to the high street and bring them back as quick as you can. Go on. Good. Well, you know what to do with them. Take them behind the gas works and burn them. I've got to get up to the farm. The farm! Did you get the paper from the farm? No, I thought you did. Jump in, Jim, in it. Miss Jackie. You're out early this morning. Oh, such a lovely day. What's the matter? Been for a cross-country run? Well, not exactly. It was a sort of a paper chase. Can I help you? Shall I have a paper? You can go and get Nobby if you like. Nobby? Yes, well, shall I put your paper in my pocket? Whatever for. Well, you might drop it in the mud. But there isn't any mud. Isn't there? Go and get Nobby. Yes. Come on, Nobby. Come on. Come on. Well, you know, the papers are getting more uninterested every day. I know, they're terrible. Yes, well, I, I never read mine anymore. I just chuck it away. It's probably a good idea. Oh, it is. It only, it only depresses you. I wouldn't bother if I was you. Same old headlines this morning, I suppose. Miss Jackie, we're late. Late? Yes, think of all the breakfasts we're holding up if we don't deliver the milk. I can hear hundreds of children screaming the tonsils out. Oh, I've never known you so anxious before. Well, it's only just come over me. Come on, Nobby, come on, get up. Uh, as I was saying to Mrs Jenkins, I said, pardon me, madam, but this isn't grade A milk, it's, it's bee milk. And she said, I didn't know bees gave milk. <laughs> George, do you realise you haven't stopped talking since we started out? Haven't I, Miss Jackie? No, now quiet a minute while I read the paper. Oh! Now what is it? Let's fold it over and do the crossword on the back. You hold the reins and I'll read out the clues. Will you be quiet? Sorry, Miss Jackie. You're right, it's deadly dull. Oh! I know what we can do. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's make it into paper hats and pretend we're soldiers, eh? George. Sorry, Miss Jackie. Whoa! What the world's the matter? Well, I, uh, sorry, I, I thought I saw a bus. Uh, uh. Get up! Get up! Did I, did I tell you that milk had gone up in price? Gone up? Yes, sir, farther than a hogshead. Is it in here? Yes, I'll show you. Sure, no, I'll find it. Well, for the love of Mike, how did that happen? Uh, sparks from the horse's hoof. Sparks? Uh, yes, uh, the flint in the road. They, they teach you things like that in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> George, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Haven't you ever learnt anything? You can go... I've seen me when I was in... You can go into a forest and rub two Boy Scouts together, you'll get sparks. Perhaps that run didn't do you any good. <laughs> it did me more good than you'll ever know. Well, you must admit you've been acting a little strangely this morning. Well, I am a little strange in the morning. I've got so many things on my mind. When at dawn the old clock chimes and the cock begins to crow, with me milk cart in good time around my rounds I go. I've seen windows open wide when delivering the morning milk. I've seen girls asleep inside when delivering the morning milk. Their bedroom's small, there's too much heat, their tootsies they stick out in the street. I hang me milk cans on their feet when delivering the morning milk. My blush is red, I try to hide when delivering the morning milk. A girl sleepwalker once I spied when delivering the morning milk. She smiled and whispered with a sob, you old Robert Taylor, oh kiss me bob. I said, no thanks, that's not my job, I'm delivering the morning milk. To one enormous family, I'm delivering the morning milk. They take seven pints from me when delivering the morning milk. Of children, they've got 24, and if they mean to have any more, I'll push a cow through their front door when delivering the morning milk. 
Mr. Brown on night work down the street, I'm delivering the morning milk. While his wife listens for his feet, I'm delivering the morning milk. She shouted out, is that you, Ted? You must be tired, come up to bed. I'm sorry, Mama, can't, I said. I'm delivering the morning milk. Hey-ho, delivering the morning milk. Whoa! Here we are, man the house. Two pints for Lady Driscoll. Thank you. Morning, Andy. Nice day. Milko! Oh, Mr. Andy, you gave me a star. Oh, don't mention it. I'm giving things away. Uh, did Herbert bring a paper this morning? No. <laughs> That's good. I mean, he didn't bring one to anybody. The little rascal must have lost them. It doesn't worry us, her ladyship has upset my post. Oh, I see. What? You mean the paper's already arrived? Of course, it's just gone up to her. <laughs> George, you mad? You'll turn the milk into butter. Sorry, Miss Jack, it must be the Ben Ehren me. <laughs> Mary! Mary! Mary, you mustn't scream outside your ladyship's door, especially when I'm out here. It wasn't me, sir. It was Madame herself. Madam? Good gracious. Are you all right, my dear? George. Yes, coming, love, coming. Oh, George! You mustn't start screaming at your age. George, look at that! Oh, gosh. It's scandalous! But did you say luxury soaps could use this painting? George Driscoll, do you suppose one moment I pose for that painting? No. I'll have them for slander. Isn't slander the spoken word? Well, libel. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Libel's the written word. I don't care what it is, I'll sue them for it. I'll take out the habeas corpus or a quid pro quo, whatever they call it. Oh, it is a bit thick, isn't it? Oh, are you referring to my waist? No, 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 my dear. You ought to know I'm above that. Oh, so you're above that. Well, that's nothing like me either. Why, this, this creature's obviously got a large 38. You know perfectly well I'm a small 36. Not that you'd remember. Is that last remark nice, my dear? Of course it isn't nice, but that's how it is. Oh, would you want you such goings on going on? What is Did you get bad news? Why did you say There's a picture in the paper. What picture? Oh, from what I can gather, there's a picture, madam. Without? Blimey. Nothing at all. Well, Lady Driscoll, get away. Struck it up. There's a picture in the paper. Well, what's she doing like that? Search me. Perhaps she did it for a bit. Well, blow me. No. Yes, one of those wild Mayfair parties. I can't believe it. It's too all right. He took a flashlight picture of it. The copper saw it. Well, it just shows you, doesn't it? My dear, do you believe that dreadful story about Lady Driscoll? Of course I do. What is it? She did a dance at a very important party and got arrested. No. How do you know? It all came out through the copper. He got it on the phone from Scotland Yard. Oh. Uh, yes, and in front of a very important party. Who was the party? Probably a cabinet minister or someone. Anyway, it took three coppers to arrest her. Oh. Now, I'm telling you this in the strictest confidence. Of course. So when you repeat it, be careful who you tell it to. Naturally. It's about Lady Driscoll. Morning, ladies. Here, you may as well hear this too. It's about Lady Driscoll. Well, what about her? She's been arrested for doing a fan dance. What? On the steps of the House of Parliament. Oh, what did they do? George, for heaven's sake, you'll have the wheels off. Am I going fast? Look. What? Isn't that the first swallow? Go on, get up. Good morning, Mom. Oh, good morning. Well, the boy went out with all the papers. I haven't any more. He took the lot. I'll murder that boy. What's up? Nobody seems to have any papers this morning. Four soaps, four toothpastes. Right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, Mr. Hartfield. Oh, I'll murder her, too. What's the matter with her? Oh, shut her trouble again. <laughs> I know you won't believe me, but... Oh. Can I help you, Mum? Oh, no, thank you. I can manage. Why, I... Let me do that, Boyle. Oh, I'm terribly... <laughs> Think nothing of it. Accidents will happen. Anyhow, you shouldn't be lifting these things. There. Now, is there anything else you want done? Why, oh, no. Are you all right? All right, of course I'm all right. Never felt better in my life. You're different somehow. 
So are you. Am I? And I think it's time we got to know each other a little better. What do you think, Amelia? I think I'd better go and get some coal for the stove. No, 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 no. Allow me. <laughs> I've never known you so sweet and thoughtful, Mr. H. You know, there's things about a person you don't see right away. Not Arthur, Aunt. I'll get the coal. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. And how does it feel to be famous? Oh, famous? Oh, I see you have it well displayed. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, have I? Well, the actor would like to know if there's any statement you'd care to make. This looks like being a very big case, and we'd like to tie it up before the Nationals get it. Oh, the Nationals? Huh. Your first reaction was one of horror. Now, look here, young fellow. You watch out what you go printing in your paper. You've got to be very careful, Amelia. The standstill to an echo is the very soul of discretion. Needless to say, you had no knowledge of the painting before it appeared. Why, needless to say? I beg your pardon? I said, why, needless to say? Why shouldn't I have any knowledge of it? You, you mean you knew about it? Who knows what I did? You mean you posed for it? I didn't say that, did I? No, but you implied it. Oh. Don't take implications where there may not be any. Now, look here, Miss Peabody. Did you or did you not pose for that painting? I'm afraid I can't talk without a lawyer, but I will say I won't say I haven't. You, you will say you won't say you haven't? I won't say I haven't known painters in my time. What? An artist on Brighton Pier once told me I had the perfect Gibson girl figure. Whoa! <sighs> Have you any gin, Mr. H? I think I could go for one. Yes, of course. You know, this looks like the last scene in a Who Done It film. And the culprit is one of us round this table. I'm afraid it isn't as easy as that. Unfortunately, we're still in the dark. Not half as in the dark as I am. What's it all about? Obviously, you haven't seen the papers yet. Well, why doesn't someone show the girl? But heaven, she's of age, isn't she? You're in the papers, my dear. We're all in the papers, and that's about all we're in. <laughs> I fail to see what's funny about it. Oh. But I think it's very funny. Where did it come from? What's it all about? Who did it? That's what we intend to find out. Well, in, in that case, you won't want me, will you? On the contrary. You're a poster artist, aren't you? Yes, but only draw faces. You can ask the cinema manager. I mean, when well, never to... mind about that. You're the very man we do want. Sit down. Yes, sir. Needless to say, you didn't pose for this picture. Of course not. Did you? Oh! Did you hear that, George? Huh? Not you, you. Me? Yes. Haven't you anything to say? <laughs> well, I certainly didn't pose for it, my dear. <laughs> George, you're in the advertising line too, aren't you? By gad, no, sir. Actually, the guards. George. Uh, yes, my lady. Not you. You should know. How do these things get in the papers? Oh, it's nothing to do with me. I've, uh... Nobody's saying it is, you fool. What we want to know is, what process does an advertisement of this sort go through before it reaches print? Does the advertising firm commission someone to draw it? Do they use their own staff or what? Well, it, it all depends, you see. In, in this particular case, they got... I mean, they might have got several artists to do it, you see. Why several artists? Well, one does the heads and and someone else fits them onto someone else's body. It, it works that way, see? What a disgusting thought. My head fitted to someone else's body? Why, it may not even be clean. We must find the people responsible for this and sue them for thousands in damages. Well, I can't help thinking we're making a lot of fuss about nothing. Nothing? Well, I think Miss Jack is right because... But you realise the shame, the humiliation I'm suffering? They've added two inches to my bust. Well, isn't that making mountains out of molehills? When we want your opinion, Andy, we'll ask for it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Then we're all agreed that this calls for concerted and joint action against all parties concerned. I presume you're with us, Jackie? It's all right with me. Lady Driscoll? Every step of the way. If necessary, I'll take it to the Supreme Court. That's in America, my dear. Oh, is it? Well, they must have a branch over here somewhere. Listen, she's confessed. What? She posed for him. Who? Oh. Uh, Amelia Peabody. No. She won't say she didn't pose. Look, they brought out a special edition. Oh! Sensational turn in advertisement mystery. Stan Stilton Green Gibson girl refuses to deny she posed for painting. The cheeky fuss cut. People are now asking if Miss Peabody posed for the painting, can it be that Lady Driscoll and Miss Jackie Summers also posed? George! That's not true. They can't print that. They have printed it. Oh, this makes the damages heavier. But they're practically accusing Miss Jackie of... 
just a minute. Yes, please? No, thank you. I want to see the editor. Got an appointment? No, I've got a complaint. Want to see a doctor? I've come about this. I won't have you printing things like this about Miss Jackie. Oh, you won't? And what's more, I demand you print an apology. You do? She's had enough trouble with a picture plastered all over everywhere without you suggesting she posed for it. Well, how do we know she didn't? Now, look here, mister. I don't often get mad, but when I do, I see red. And when I see red, I go white, and my veins stand out blue. And when I'm red, white, and blue, anything might happen. <laughs> it has done. Thank you. Claiming Miss Jackie Summers had been insulted in the afternoon editions, two gun George Andy blazed his way into the offices of the Echo and beat up the staff and editor. The editor, whilst in no way admitting the accusations hurled at him, raises his hat to the spirit of Sir Galahad, who rode again in the person of two gun Andy. Want to hear any more? No, that'll do for now. Well, at least he did raise his hat to you. Ah, and he's raised a lump here, too. <laughs> Looks like I've been playing arts and crosses. It's like I always said, show me a woman and I'll show you trouble. Oh, hello. Well, there's one thing. Miss Jack is one person I wouldn't mind getting myself in trouble over. Give me that towel. Don't stand there. Give me that towel. How long have I have to wait for it? Thank you. Well, there's another thing I'd like to tell you. If it wasn't for that frosty-faced young man of hers... Oh! Miss Jackie... I'm, I'm not intruding, George. No, you're not. Come in, you Come a bit for... Sit down. Thank you. Well, Miss Jackie, I, I'm sorry what I said about your Mr Latimer. You know, me calling him a... Well, you heard. As a matter of fact, there's a pretty good description of him sometimes. George, I want to thank you. What? For calling him a... For what you did. Oh, that. Then you're not angry? Angry? Why, George, I think he was swell of you. Oh, your face. Oh, that that's nothing. That's where the encyclopedia hit me. Encyclopedia? <laughs> yes, that was volume one. And that? That was volume two. Well, I think it was magnificent of you. Well, I'm sorry about the whole business. I mean, the advertisement and whoever painted it. Oh, they'll probably never find him. They won't. Well, Robert got in touch with the firm who published it, and they don't know who the painter was. Anyway, I'm glad. <laughs> so am I. I mean, I'm glad that you were glad. <laughs> so this is the Andy Domain. Right. It's not much to write home about, is it? <laughs> George, these paintings are wonderful. Me? Yes, well, it's not as good as it should be. I had a bit of trouble with your left ear till last Wednesday. My left ear? Yes, you see, while I'm driving the milk cart, I can only see you right, so I've got to do your left one in bits. <laughs> but it's wonderful. Do you really think so? I've never felt so flattered in my life. Well, if you really like it, you can have it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> George, you're sweet. It's wonderful of you to say that, Miss Jacker, because you sort to ring the bell with me as well. <laughs> Even Sir Ecker gets excited. <laughs> I want you to know, George, that, well, if there's anything you ever want me to do, don't be afraid to ask. What well, do you mean that? Anything? Everything. Well, I wonder, could I... Would you mind if... <laughs> I don't like asking. <laughs> don't be silly. What is it? Well, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. You'll be angry. Of course I won't. Well, I wonder, could I come round some night when your father's not in and... <laughs> come round and what, George? Well, and um, make a proper job of your left ear. <laughs> Not only my left ear, but you're hereby commissioned to paint my picture from life. How's that? <laughs> my hand's shaking already, Miss Jackie. I must go, George. So long, and thanks a million. <laughs> Ooh. She kissed me. Your girl kissed me, see? So what? So what? <laughs> I'm a lucky son of a gun, can't believe that it's true. 
that this lucky son of a gun found somebody like you. I think you must know the man in the moon up in the heaven so blue. Because I think you fell from heaven. I'm just talking to the moon about you. I think he must know the reason you fell. I've got an idea he knew. And even though I know he'll never tell, I'm just talking to the moon about you. He maybe saw the angels take a rainbow from the sky and make a beautiful someone especially for me. I felt like a Romeo too. And that's the very reason why you see me talking to the moon about you. Talking to the moon about you. It's heaven to look right into your eyes. The feeling is something so new. I think I'm down to earth, then I realize I'm just talking to the moon about you. I wish I knew if I had a chance to marry you and find romance. I want to find out. How homely you are, and if you'd share a cottage for two, or if you're just a lovely fallen star, if that's the case, it's right to go on every night just talking to the moon about you. Oh! We know the advertising firm, we know the printers. Both of these parties have been served with writs. As to the artist, I'm afraid we've drawn a complete blank. The defendants claim they bought the original from a pavement artist. A pavement artist? It is too much. How dare a common pavement artist even think of me in that undressed state? It is a horrible thought, madam. Can they produce this pavement artist? Oh, naturally not. It's my belief they're shielding the real artist. However, if they care to shoulder full damages, that's their funeral. <laughs> well, that sounds most cheerful. Whose funerals have I butted into? Quiet, Jackie. Robert's talking. I can't believe it. Since you're one of the plaintiffs, my dear, it might be an idea if you interested yourself in this case a little more. Personally, I couldn't be less interested, but go ahead, don't let me stop any funerals. Well, of course, if you have no shame at seeing your figure displayed all over the country, well... I'm not ashamed of my figure. Are you? Oh, 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 I say that's jolly good. George! <clears throat> oh, uh, yes, my dear, you mustn't talk like that to your elders. Elders? Oh, this is getting us nowhere. Let Robert get on. Now, let's have no more interruptions. I found it. I found it. You found what? The artist's name, or at least his initials. What? Look, right there, halfway up the tree. Oh! Uh, there you are, G-A. G-A? How lucky you had your magnifying glass. I mean, how clever of you to find the initials. I should never have thought of climbing up the tree, would you, George? Not just now, dear. G-A. Can anyone think of any well-known artist with those initials? G-A. G-A. George Arliss. George Arliss. Painters, my dear, not cricketers. G.A., G.A. Where did this come from? It's mine, why? Where did you get it? It was given me by George Andy. Before... George Andy. There, ladies and gentlemen, you have your painter. G.A., George Andy. No. 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 Oh. So. And furthermore, we, the women of Stan Stilton Green, resolve to wipe out this black stain on our town's record. Yes! Yeah. 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 George Andy, a man we've taken inside our very houses, has perpetrated a criminal breach of decency and he must be made to pay. Yeah. 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 I don't hear your assent, Mrs. Roy. Don't think I'm not as shocked as all of you. But, well, surely the law will punish you. The law. The law. You know how fast the law works. Even if they convict him, it'll take months. And by that time, we might all be unfrocked. Yeah. If you wish to disassociate yourself from our cause, oh, we know. In that case, forward, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. The last man I saw in a top hat was going to a cemetery. Well, you go to weddings in them as well. I suppose it's the same thing, really. Now, look here, young fella, my lad. If Miss Jackie ever marries me, if she ever consents, if I ever ask her, if I ever pluck up courage, you'll be our child, and you'll have to look up to her, do you see? I'd rather starve. I'm not going to let any woman feed me. 
I didn't mean that. You're too old, anyway. Oh, I see you've put some clothes on them this time. Oh, hello. You viper. Me, Mrs. Ellison. Don't you defile my name with your tongue. I don't understand. You don't understand? If you're a man, come outside and meet me face to face. What's gone wrong with her? She wants to meet you face to face. Yes, but I don't like her face. Are you coming out or am I coming in? What's the right answer to that one? Go out. What can you lose? Nothing. I hope. If you know any prayers, you'd better say them now. He wouldn't know any. You, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you. Oh, come on, let's do him now. Mother! Mother! What's up? They think I'm Dr. Jekyll. Well, what are you going to do? Hide. Come out of there, you skulking rat, or we'll come in and get you. Hey! This is going to be a siege. Oh, how much food have we got? Not much. Never mind, they did it in Mafeking. Oh! Say, girls, if he don't come out, we'll burn him! They must have found out about that picture. Yes, but how your name wasn't on it. No, only my initials. That picture I gave Miss Jacket made initials on that, too. Show me a woman and I'll show you trouble. Never mind about showing me trouble, show me how to get out of it. gone very quiet outside. Perhaps they've gone away. Let's take these things down and look out of the window. Well, and get me black knocked off, not likely. I don't know that this isn't going a little too far as members of the bridge club. Oh, quiet. This is the first bit of fun I've had since I joined it. <laughs> Phew, it's getting hot. Ah, it'll be a lot after these women get in, too. It's not like April, though, is it? Well, we may as well make ourselves as comfortable as we can. This can go on for months. It's like a summer's day. Give us a bit. You know, this heat's going to get me in the end. Whoa! We're on fire. Go and find the fire brigade. No, no, don't, don't look that window. We'll have to fight it ourselves. Oh! <laughs> 
just the very man I wanted. Summers, Driscoll and Peabody versus Andy. Thanks very much. And may it please your lordship, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in the course of our argument, we shall endeavour to show that a gross and infamous libel has been committed upon Lady Driscoll, Miss Peabody and Miss Summers. These three highly respectable members of the highly respectable district of... Where's Jackie? Green. I don't know. She no, left here a few minutes ago. But, Jimmy, you must believe me. I want to help George. You should have thought of that before. It's all through you who's in this mess. Through me? Well, what have I got to do with it? He's loony over you, that's what. He wanted to be a great painter and sell your face as a masterpiece, that's what. He wanted to lick the world just to show you, that's what. I warned him. Show me a woman and I'll show you trouble. But I'm a woman, Jimmy. Yes, and are we in trouble? Look, Jimmy, you'd do anything for George, wouldn't you? You know that. Well, do this for him. Trust me. And between us, we'll pull him out of this somehow. What do you say? OK. But don't try any woman stuff on me. Furthermore, we shall demand adequate and satisfying damages from the soap company which instituted the advertising campaign, the advertising agency which commissioned the offence thereby causing such humiliation, embarrassment and loss of reputation to the ladies concerned, and lastly, but by no means least, the painter who is responsible for this outrage. <coughs> oh. Silence in court. Sorry, you are ship. Milad and members of the jury, may I submit the evidence in the form of the lithographic representation of the soap advertisement? The advertisement depicts three ladies wandering through a country setting in a state of semi-nudity. These are recognizable portraits of our clients. If it please me, lad, I shall call my first witness, Amelia Peabody. Amelia Peabody. Now, be brave, little woman, be brave. Miss Peabody, you are one of the ladies depicted in that advertisement, are you not? Yes, sir. Which one? The one on the left, lying on my lawn, you know. Miss Peabody, did you ever pose for that picture? Well, uh, I don't want to cause any trouble. Witness must answer the questions put to her. Did you pose for the picture? Well, I won't say I actually posed for that one, but I have been approached many times. I remember once... Uh, uh, please keep to the question, Miss Peabody. What we want to know is, were you ever approached by George Andy to pose for that picture? Um, not exactly, but... Uh, he used to clean my windows. <laughs> Ooh, you big fibber. You can't see through them. She's got thick curtains on. Silence in court. Thank you, Miss Peabody. That's all I wanted to know. I think I've made my point, my lad. And I'm sure you'll appreciate that in a small village, tongues have wagged on far less provocation. Your witness. No questions, my lord. We'll recall this witness later. I want to know. I would advise you to leave your case in the hands of counsel. I haven't got one. You mean you're not represented? I don't know about that, but I haven't got a counsel. At least, not down here. Very well. You may question the witness. I see you, you were in a diamond ring, Miss Peabody. Not diamond. A sky blue aquamarine surrounded with diamond ships set in platinum. Fancy. Have you have you just got engaged? I object, Miller. The question appears to be irrelevant. Has it any bearing on the case? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Very well, proceed. Uh, who's the lucky fella? Well, I uh, see uh, Mr. Harfield. Well, <laughs> Mr. Well, I'll go to our house. <laughs> Highlands and Court. Excuse me, my loud. You got engaged after the advertisement, didn't you? We asked each other yesterday. I accepted. And before the advertisement, uh, he was a bit backward in coming forward. Well, uh, <laughs> in fact, you'd given up hopes of <laughs> giving in. My lord, I object. May it please the court, my lord, we suggest that an answer to this question affects the cases of our clients. Thanks very much. The witness must answer. Well, I, uh, what was the question? You heard, you heard. I don't bowl me cabbages twice. I've always admired Mr. Harfield, Your Honour. Did he or did he not come up to scratch before the advertisement came out? Remember, you've been sworn at. Sworn in is the expression. Thank you, my lord. Well, no, he didn't. 
But I am engaged now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> engaged now. <laughs> so it seems the advertisement did the old girl a bit of all right, eh? Harrison <laughs> <laughs> Sinclair, have you finished with the witness? Well, uh, yes, my lord. Your witness, my lord. We submit, my lord, that the evidence we've just heard has no bearing on the case. We respectfully submit, your lordship, that the plaintiff's plea of humiliation, embarrassment and loss of reputation be totally disregarded. On her own admission, after several years of sedulous but unsuccessful cultivation of the friendship of Mr. Harfield, she has now at last become his betrothed. Well, that's what I said, she's clicked at last. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. Uh, may it please your lordship, our next witness is Lady Driscoll. Lady Driscoll! Yes, yes, I'm coming. I told you I should have sat on the outside. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, this is worse than the movies. Excuse Ow. me, you should keep your feet in. You are Lady Driscoll? You don't think I'd have come all the way up here if I weren't, do you? Did you ever pose for the artist who painted that picture? I certainly did not. And he doesn't clean my windows either. Will you tell the court exactly how the publication of that advertisement affected you? I was never so humiliated in my life. How would you like it if someone painted you dressed in nothing with a 38-inch bust? You are in the box, Lady Driscoll, not I. I think it's disgusting that a respectable woman can walk around and suddenly find herself stripped in public, especially with the price of clothes, what they are. You mentioned the figure 38 inch. Is that humiliating? It is when you've told your friends. I mean, uh, when you're not as big as that. Might I inquire what size <coughs> you are? I'm 36. <laughs> Two inches. 36. So that not only have you been used as an unwilling model, but the finished result has libeled you to the extent of two inches. Your witness. I do. You do what? Uh, I, w I want to ask her a few questions. Proceed. Yes, well, I've just got some instructions from my client. I mean, on behalf of myself. I am waiting, Mr. Andy. Uh, uh, have you... Have you ever been to the pictures? I object, my lad. I quite appreciate the objections of the learned counsels to the rather unethical manner in which the defence is being handled. But I feel that we should allow a little latitude and in view of the fact that Mr. Andy is conducting his own case. What exactly are you trying to get from the witness? I'm trying to get her taped. No, I'm, I mean, I want to ask her some questions. I mean, when all said and done, it's a free country, isn't it? Proceed, Mr. Whatchamacallit. Yes, thank you, Mr. Thingamabob, uh, my loud. Now, uh, Lady Driscoll, I was about to say, uh, uh, have you ever been to the pictures? Of course. Have you, have you ever seen Gone with the Wind? Now, think carefully before you answer. Well, uh... Uh, yes. You admit you've seen Gone with the Wind? I do. <laughs> Grand picture, wasn't it? How did you go? Had I known I should have to do so much standing, I'd have put my other shoes on. <laughs> Would you mind telling the court what all this is about? Yes, my lord, if I can read my letter and find out for myself. Sorry, my lord. I am waiting, Mr. Andy. <laughs> this is worth waiting for. So the picture embarrassed you because you weren't dressed. Naturally. <laughs> Silence! I bet your face was red the day this was painted. <laughs> Have a look at that. You were oh. on the silver before you were married, weren't you, Lady Driscoll? Well, uh, yes. Well, bless my soul. Wasn't that Rebels of... <clears throat> Proceed. My lord, ladies, gentlemen, lords of the jury, this picture's been hanging for the past six years in a theatrical agent's office. It's been on view to trick cyclists, jugglers, acrobats, animal trainers. Harry Marst, I never booked animal trainers. <laughs> you ought to know. Oh! I object, my lord. That's all that seems to be happening around here. Every time we win a round up, junks Uncle Tom Cobbling objects. <laughs> <laughs> But this evidence again proves conclusively that yet another of the plaintiffs has absolutely no claim for damages in this action. I object, my lord. Admitting that our client is Miss Connie Silver, and that she did post that picture many years ago... Not so many. Lady Driscoll has still been grossly libelled and embarrassed by the portrayal of a 38-inch... Uh... May it please my lord to object. Now, here's a card from the agency files. Objection overruled. May it please me loud. What does the card say? It says Connie Silver, height, five, two and a half, bust, 
39. Oh. 39. Eight, eight, see me loud. 36. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no, it seems, me loud, the advertisement didn't do her any harm either. I don't think we have any more questions, my lad. Neither have I, my lad, if it pleases the court, even though it doesn't please her ladyship. I now call Miss Jackie Summers. Miss Jackie Summers. Uh, Miss Summers, did you pose for Mr. Andy? Yes. <laughs> uh, Miss Summers, think what you're saying. Do I understand you to say that you have posed for Mr. Andy? Yes, sir. In a milk cart. In a milk cart? Yes, sir, while delivering the morning milk. The poster has, of course, caused you a lot of unhappiness. On the contrary, I haven't been so happy for years. Miss Summers. I was engaged to Mr. Latimer down there, and I've been wondering how to break it off gracefully for months. The advertisement did it for me. Hey, she's not engaged, my lord. He's broke it off, my lord. I'm afraid that is breach of promise and another court entirely. Islands in court. Islands in court. Yes, I am. What is that, a fire bell? You see, my lad, when it's set for 8 o'clock, it usually goes off at 11, but this time it's gone off right, so I'll have to adjust it wrong again. <laughs> the point I can't get clear is the reason why you're in court at all. I came here You to... came here as one of the plaintiffs in a case for damages, and you've just told us no damage has been done. That is correct, is it not? Quite correct. Then what in the world are you bringing the case for? I was asked to come in with the others. When the advertisement first appeared, Mr. Latimer said that... Mr. Latimer said, uh... What did Mr. Letterman say? I'll tell you what he said, my lord. He said the longer that picture of them all together, in the all together, was stuck up on the hoardings, the bigger damages they could claim. See? It seems to me there has been some very unprofessional conduct in this case on the part of plaintiffs. May it please your lordship, whatever Mr. Letterman may or may not have said to his clients, we cannot ask these three humiliated ladies to suffer for any lapse of professional etiquette on the part of their advisor. May it please, my lord. We respectfully submit that up to the present, the plaintiffs have failed to show that they have suffered any loss of reputation, humiliation or embarrassment. In fact, each and every one of these plaintiffs, in one way or another, has actually benefited from the publication of this advertisement. That's right. That may be as counsel remarks, but nevertheless, the law is the law. And the law demands that damages shall be assessed in ratio to the amount of harm done. And in this case, I fear I must grant the plaintiffs damages. I award the plaintiffs one farthing damages. Thank you, my lord. A farthing? Is that all we've got to pay? <laughs> you don't even have to pay that. This case is on me. Here's a halfpenny. Take the damages and keep the chain. Come on, Miss Jackie. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I want to... <laughs> I know what I want to say, Miss Jackie, but every time I try to say it, my tongue goes boogie-woogie. <laughs> so I bring the boogie-woogie out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Much too shy. No, it's not fair. You shouldn't be looking. 